I tried to remarry my ex-wife, but she figured out I was only after my money. Today, I'm going to recap a 2021 action thriller film called One Shot. The movie kicks off by presenting Lieutenant Jake Harris, currently en route to execute a confidential task, alongside his team and a woman by the name of Zoe Anderson, working as an analyst for the CIA. They are heading towards a rendezvous to collect a prisoner known as Amon Mansur, guilty of terrorism charges, who is currently detained in the CIA Black Site Island Penitentiary. As they touch down, Jake and his squad are welcomed by an individual named Tom Shields who is second in command at the prison. While traversing towards the main office of the warden, they witness various inmates confined with invisible cells. Tom subsequently escorts both Zoe and Jake to meet Jack York, the authoritative warden of the institution. Prior to their encounter, Tom cautions Zoe and Jake about York's volatile nature and his tendency to be uncooperative, particularly as he was not previously informed of their impending visit. York appears puzzled regarding the sudden interest the CIA has shown in Amon Mansur and their intent to relocate him to a penitentiary within the United States. Zoe remains tight-lipped about the specifics of the transfer when questioned by York, as it is classified information. Nonetheless, Zoe affirms the legitimacy of the operation by presenting an official document to York, bearing the signature of the Minister of Defense, validating the extraction and relocation of Amon Mansur. York, however, still resists the idea, asserting the potential hazards associated with transferring a convicted terrorist prisoner to a different facility. York intends to validate the transfer by contacting the minister himself and directs Tom to escort Zoe and Jake to Amon Mansur, a detainee who has been subjected to continuous torment over the past months, but has remained mute. Zoe subsequently instructs the removal of Amon's shackles and proceeds to question him. In his defense, Amon professes to be a businessman and refutes the charges of terrorism. Upon hearing that he will soon be relocated to the U.S., Amon exercises his rights as a British citizen to have legal representation. Zoe, however, dismisses his plea, stating that his British citizenship has been annulled by the foreign minister, thereby stripping him of his entitlements. Subsequently, Jake voices his concern to Zoe about her risky handling of the prisoner, both in terms of physical and psychological implications but his warning falls on deaf ears. Zoe is determined to expedite Amon Mansur's transfer. Echoing York's earlier sentiments, Jake also expresses his suspicion to Zoe and the CIA about the abrupt extraction and relocation of Amon Mansur. However, Zoe merely justifies the CIA's actions as a measure to prevent a recurrence of the September 11 tragedy. Despite suspicions from some of Jake's team members that Zoe might be withholding information, Jake clarifies that their sole assignment is to ensure the safe escort of Zoe and the detainees, nothing more. Shortly thereafter, the vehicle transporting the prisoner made its appearance. However, a pandemonium ensued when an individual disembarking from the vehicle fired at a guard. The vehicle forcefully breached the entrance, and a cater of armed men, concealed within the truck, launched a surprising and indiscriminate attack on the guards. A firefight was inevitable. Jake and his team found themselves with no other option but to assist the guards, so it proceeded to remove Amon from his confinement, and accompanied by Jake and a few of his team members, was preparing to board a helicopter. Yet, before they could reach it, an assembly of gunmen destroyed the helicopter. The attackers successfully incapacitated the guards and seized control, compelling Jake and the others to seek a sufficiently secure hiding spot. Jake and his team then escorted Zoe and Amon to the control room. Jake managed to take down several of the attackers, one of them succumbing to a lethal shot. Tom attempted to call for reinforcements, but the communication tower had been demolished by the terrorist. The only available emergency telephone was located in York's office. Monitoring the CCTV feeds, it was evident that York was struggling to fend off the armed assailants single-handedly. Among the group attacking York, Zoe recognized one of them, a man named Hakim Serif, a former mercenary who had ascended to the leadership of a radical faction in Syria. Jake implored Zoe to disclose the truth about the assault by Hakim and his cohorts, aimed at assassinating Amon. Zoe finally disclosed that Amon was an ISIS sympathizer and financial contributor, a fact substantiated when the CIA uncovered evidence of money laundering conducted by Amon through his business. 
where the funds were directed towards financing ISIS-led terrorist attacks globally. Zoe tried to convince Jacob Allman's involvement in a grand scheme to execute a massive bombing in Washington, D.C. by ISIS. Consequently, Zoe was adamant about extraditing Amman to the United States immediately to foil the bombing plot, as her analysis suggested that Amman was privy to the bomb's location. However, Amman vehemently rejected Zoe's allegations and maintained that he had no knowledge of Hakim Seraf and his group. In the end, Jake chose to trust Zoe and formulated a plan to evacuate Zoe and Amman from the premises. Tom, however, voiced his disagreement with Jake as he found Zoe's assertions rather dubious. Jake proceeded to fit Amon with a bulletproof vest, at which point Amon forewarned Jake that he would regret placing more trust in Zoe's words over his. Meanwhile, in the corridor, two members of Jake's team were resisting assaults from terrorists attempting to gain entry. Despite sustaining several shots, they managed to hold off the enemy attacks temporarily. Tom formulates a plan to surrender Amon to Hakim Seraf and his crew in an attempt to halt their assault as he is unwilling to see his men suffer for the sake of safeguarding a condemned terrorist prisoner, such as Amon. However, Zui interjects and attempts to shield him. This provokes Tom, who then urges Jake to eliminate Amon. When Jake declines to comply, Tom seizes a firearm with the intention of carrying out the act himself. Feeling the imminent threat to his life, Amon finally confesses that his five-year-old son was a casualty of a U.S. military missile strike while they were attending a wedding ceremony. A week following this tragedy, Amon was approached by a radical group's leader and his crew, who intended to exploit Amon's company for money laundering purposes. Amon expresses his regret for aiding them, stating that at that time he was consumed by grief over his son's loss and was fueled by a thirst for vengeance and anger resulting from the demise of his sole offspring. Nevertheless, Amon adamantly denies any knowledge of the bombing plot Zoe alluded to. Soon after, they receive a video call from York, who informs them that the emergency phone in his office is inoperable and that someone needs to exit the RA. The call is abruptly terminated as York must fend off an onslaught from the terrorist. Tom then briefs Jake about the RA's location, where Jake intends to go personally to adjust the signal frequency, allowing them to seek assistance from the military. Before he departs, Zoe shares her suspicion with Jake that Amon could have been untruthful and she is convinced that the man must be aware of the bombing plan and the bomb's whereabouts. Jake then stealthily exits through a small window that leads to a hidden passageway to evade the terrorist in the hallway. Once outside, Jake takes cover upon seeing Hakim and his crew gunning down soldiers and other prisoners. Subsequently, Hakim is seen dragging a woman in front of him, who happens to be one of the prison administration officials. Hakim interrogates the woman about Amon Mansur's location and she reveals that the CIA and Navy SEALs are slated to transport Amon Mansur to Washington, D.C. An irritated Hakim then executes the woman and commands his minions to score the area for Amon. Jake hastens towards the RA, eliminates a few terrorists, and reaches his destination. However, Jake is unfamiliar with some of the equipment in the room, which leaves him vulnerable and unaware of a terrorist who has infiltrated the room and is preparing to assault him. Fortunately, York arrives in the nick of time and neutralizes the terrorist. York then attempts to summon aid while Jake sprints outside, diverting the terrorist's attention. Meanwhile, Hakim and his gang persist in their search for Amon Mansur across various locations, but have yet to locate him. Hakim conjectures that Amon is likely still holed up in the control room, so he calls upon one of his younger subordinates and reassures the young man with words of encouragement and commendation. Upon invoking the pledge that the young man had taken, which stipulated his readiness to sacrifice his life for a noble cause and receive a reward, Hakim proceeded to equip the young man with a bomb vest, instructing him to execute a suicide bombing mission. The young man was visibly taken aback and terror-stricken by the kamikaze task assigned by Hakim. Nonetheless, his comrades rallied around him, affirming that the mission was honorable and would be duly rewarded. Hakim and his crew escorted the young man towards the control room, where they suspected Amon was concealing himself. They deployed smoke grenades to obscure visibility and distract the Navy SEAL team members. Concurrently, Jake and York managed to navigate back to the control room through a hidden passageway, where York expressed his intention to eliminate Amon, blaming him for the needless loss of his men. Zoe and Jake, however, 
try to dissuade him. A fierce gunfight ensued, resulting in the casualty of all the Navy SEAL team members. Realizing this, Jake and York hastened to intervene. Yet, it was too late as the young man destined for the suicide bombing advanced and detonated himself right at the control room's entrance. Jake and York survived the blast, as did Almond, but Zoe and Tom were severely wounded and incapacitated. Jake instructed Almond to stay put, but Almond disregarded his directive and hastily fled the scene. Jake then turned to assess Zoe's condition, who lay feeble and helpless. She revealed to Jake that Almond's wife was expecting a child. In her final moments, Zoe implored Jake to transport Almond to Washington, D.C., to safeguard his wife and their unborn child. After conveying her last wish, Zoe succumbed to her injuries. Jake took cover upon sensing Hakim and his crew, entering the room to survey the aftermath. Hakim was visibly enraged upon discovering Amon's successful escape. The young man had been sacrificed with the intention of eliminating Amon to prevent him from divulging information about the imminent large-scale bombing. Tom, who had survived until this point, informed Hakim that Amon had exposed their entire plan. Hakim subsequently killed Tom, ordering his crew to resume their search for Amon. Shortly afterward, Hakim received intel that the U.S. military was dispatching air support to their location to neutralize their assault and escort Amon Mansur to Washington, D.C. One of his crew members proposed they suspend their search for Amon Mansur and expedite their retreat. However, Hakim obstinately declared they wouldn't withdraw until Amon Mansur was eliminated. Hakim and his gang were oblivious to Amon who was concealed among the heap of prisoner corpses. Subsequently, Amon swiftly changed his attire, masquerading as one of Hakim's men. However, his disguise was soon detected, and Amon was promptly incarcerated in a detention cell. Jake was evidently nearby when Hakim's gang apprehended Amon. He then launched an attack on Hakim's men who were guarding Amon's cell and succeeded in liberating him. Jake escorted Amon out, intending to confront the terrorist onslaught. Despite the fact that he was now fighting solo due to the demise of all his team members, he was undeterred. However, Amon seized the opportunity to flee, leaving Jake behind. Regardless, Jake stood his ground and resolutely eliminated the terrorists single-handedly. Concurrently, Hakim and a few of his men eventually located Amon and fired at him. As Hakim prepared to assassinate Amon, Jake intervened and launched an attack. Jake was successful in overpowering Hakim's crew and engaged in a face-off with Hakim. Amidst the confrontation between Jake and Hakim, Amon, who had survived due to his bulletproof vest, made his escape. Jake ultimately managed to eliminate Hakim and pursued Amon. Jake cornered Amon, trying to dissuade him from taking his own life. He informed Amon about his wife's pregnancy and speculated that she was likely present at the proposed bombing site. Thus, Jake tried to persuade Amon to abandon his suicidal intentions and accompany him to Washington, D.C. Shortly thereafter, York, who had survived, made a sudden appearance, threatening to assassinate Amon. However, Jake promptly intercepted him and managed to incapacitate him, convincing York to spare Amon's life. Having successfully persuaded York, Jake then returned his focus to Amon, attempting to convince him to collaborate in thwarting the bombing plot to save the lives of his wife their unborn child, and millions of others. Amon eventually succumbed and agreed to be transported to Washington, D.C. to disclose the bomb's location, just as the U.S. Air Force helicopters arrived at the scene. The film concludes with a scene depicting York sitting in contemplative silence, observing Jake and Amon departing from the island. If you enjoy this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.